The following program is video supplemental instruction. VSI is brought to you by the Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu. So problem 3B is actually pretty similar to problem 3A. The only difference is we have uh, fractions instead of quadratic functions, but our objective is basically the same. So remember that if you have this, you do not want to cross multiply here. That will always uh, have the potential of ruining some of your answers and you getting the problem wrong. What you want to do here instead is subtract one over so that one side of the inequality is zero. You always want to do that. So what I'm going to do here is take the one over x minus two and subtract it over. So I'm just going to start with that, greater than or equal to zero. Now to solve this, I need to combine these two, and that involves getting a common denominator. x plus one and x minus two are separate terms, so I have to multiply the left one by x minus two and the right one by x plus one in order to put these together. Our common denominator would just be their product. So there's one more step that needs to be done before you start solving is to simplify the top. So you can see on the top we have 2x minus 4 minus x minus 1. So for the x's we would have 2x minus x, so we just get x. We have minus 4 minus 1, which gives us minus 5 uh, for the numerator. On the denominator we still have x plus 1, x minus 2. So this is now fully factored, fully simplified. Now we're ready to actually solve the problem. What you do here is always you go to the number line. So let's think about what possible zeros or undefined places we have. We want any of these terms to be 0, and that number needs to go on our number line. So from the top, we have 5. That would make the top 0. And on the bottom we have 2 and negative 1 as our two numbers that could make the bottom 0. So now all we need to do is check a number in each range and see if it's greater than or equal to 0. So right, again, all we're checking for is that it's greater than or equal to 0. We don't really care what the number is. We just want to see if it's positive. If we plug in a po bigger number than 5, let's say 6, we get positive, 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 any combination like that definitely going to be positive. Anything between 2 and 5, so let's say 3, we're going to get negative up here, but positive and positive down there. A negative divided by a positive will definitely be negative. Something between negative 1 and 2, let's say 0, we're going to get negative, negative, and positive. We have two negatives that will make a positive there. That will give us a positive. And finally, something less than negative 1, like negative 2, we're going to get negatives everywhere. Three negatives there are going to be negative. So the last thing we need to determine is what's going on at our actual points, negative 1, 2, and 5. Well, let's check uh, if with those, what's happening with those particular numbers. If we plug in negative 1 or 2, we would be dividing by 0. We can't do that, so these have to be open circles, no matter what. If we plug in 5, we're going to get 0. That's okay because our inequality is greater than or equal to. So 5 is a closed point. And now we just need to write our positive intervals given this number line. So you can see here we have the interval negative 1 to 2, both in parentheses because those are open circles. And then we have the interval 5 to infinity with a bracket on 5 because 5 was included. So these are the two intervals we wanted. And we could do the, write this accordingly using the uh, parentheses and brackets correctly. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu.